Ladies and gentlemen, last night we saw a very, very interesting game from the Lakers and the Nuggets. This game went completely opposed to the other games and all their narratives and the fact the Lakers got a lead, but then were unable to handle it once essentially Nuggets were able to lock down and get better shots, play better defense. This game, however, the Lakers were able to maintain that lead and continue getting good shots throughout the game. We're going to discuss what happened. Some actually really, really good adjustments by Darvin Ham, like really, really shocking. And uh, what I think the simple solution is from a Nuggets perspective that basically solves every single issue. Let's go. Okay, the first thing we're looking at is the Lakers on offense. They ran this double ball screen quite a bit, where essentially... You got AD, Russell, and James all working together. And so you see, I guess there's a screen here first, but okay. So Russell sets the screen, and then LeBron is coming off this dribble handoff from AD. And the key issue is that AD and LeBron are the ones in this dribble handoff. The reason because that is it takes the two, quote-unquote, rim protectors for Denver off with LeBron James. So then AD is able to slip to the rim, and this puts a lot of strain on the defense because Jamal Murray has to shade over, and he's smaller than Anthony Davis. And if he shades over too far when he was trying to stop LeBron, trying to get in front of LeBron, it leads to open dunks at the rim. The Lakers ran this quite a few times in the first quarter, and I believe it caused Denver to to go into a, a little adjustment. Again, here we see it. Hey, we see first screen set by Russell. Again, probably a shooter is better to have this first screen. So that way it spaces out KCP. Hey, LeBron comes downhill, gets both players with them. This puts incredible strain on the backside of the defense, and he's able to find AD again, and Michael Porter Jr. is probably not going to be able to stop him there. And so immediately following that last play, a timeout was called, and so that's when I believe that Denver decided instead of essentially hedging with Jokic in that pass play, now they're going to essentially switch and make it so Jokic doesn't have to cover as much ground or Aaron Gordon can get to the rim faster. However, the issue is when you start to switch, that means you get Jamal Murray on LeBron James. Like, this is something that easily could have been avoided if Jamal Murray just doesn't go with LeBron, but he went with LeBron. So I'm assuming in the, in the, in whatever the timeout was discussed that they were like, yeah, okay, if they run this, Jamal, you just go with LeBron or be welcome to the switch, whatever. However, I don't think this is a winning play whatsoever for Denver. I think this is a massive mistake. As LeBron's like, he's just going to back down, and he, he gets more foul calls than the average player as well, and it puts your point guard in a very difficult position and no one's helping. I don't think that's the right play from Denver. And the Lakers clearly don't think it's the right play as well because they go to it over and over and over again. Okay, we see screen set, trying to get switched there, no switch. Okay, then this ball screen right here, boom. Instant switch. And what are they doing? They just post up LeBron. Right? I know a lot of people don't like LeBron, but like if you leave him one on one with a smaller defender, like it's gonna be tough for that smaller defender. That's just the reality of it. Side note, one other thing I talked about in the last video was Torian Prince. I believe Torian Prince played a lot more minutes for the Lakers this game because he's more of a shooter. And I think that was a tremendous move by Darvin Ham. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Just let them start for Rui Hachimura. Don't let them sag off anyone. Let you have a shooter in the corner. Like, I get it, you're going to trade up on defense, but they're, you, the issue is on offense. So why not give yourself more space and let AD and LeBron have more to work with? So I absolutely love that. I would love to see him start, frankly. 100% I would love to see him start. Okay, ball screen, what happens? Switch. And again, Jamal Murray just one-on-one. -on -one. That's a real tough task. Real, real tough task. All right, so in this last little bit, we look at actually like four possessions in a row where we saw adjustment, change, change, change immediately. Okay, so the first thing we want to note is who is guarding Gabe Vincent up here. Gabe Vincent, I deem a complete non-shooter. Jamal Murray is currently guarding him. Okay, so we have ball screen set. Okay, we're watching Aaron Gordon. Okay, so we see ball screen. Jokic is hedging, like I said. He is up at the level of the screen. So they whip it to 80 real quick. This puts strain on Aaron Gordon because he has to step up to stop 80. Who is open? LeBron James. LeBron James cuts the rim and a wide open pass. Okay, we have the next half court possession. What do we see immediately? Exact same thing. Okay, LeBron's over here. Prince, Vincent, everyone's in the exact same position. Okay, on this, Jokic kind of bails a little bit earlier, so it's like a way softer head. She comes up to level. But the issue is if you're able on this screen to get KCP trapped behind you, okay, which Russell does a good job of using that offhand to pin him right there. It creates good looks because Jokic still has to respect AD, so it's essentially 
one on one where you have a step with the defend defender and Russell gets a great look. And immediate timeout from Denver. Let's see how they change. Okay, so the change is okay, we see Gabe Vincent over here. What is Jamal Murray doing? Okay, and Jamal Murray is not anywhere near Vincent. He is in the paint, or not quite in the paint, but almost in the paint, in the driving lane, make, making Russell pick up the ball here instead of being able to get down to the rim. Okay, so even with KCP getting knocked down over here, it still creates a worse look than we had last possession. They get the rebound, but in general, it creates a worse look because they're just simply not helping, or they're aggressively helping off of Vincent and don't care about him in the corner whatsoever. And so then the Lakers, on the very next possession, what do they do? Boom. Hey, who's in the corner now? Said, so Gabe Vincent, get the hell out of here. They're not respecting you. You got to go up here to the wing. Hey, make it much harder for your player to help off. Hey, you got Prince now in the corner. Prince is a legit shooter. Hey, and so how do the Lakers guard this? Or how does Nuggets guard this? Boom. Same thing. Jokic is way low. However, that means it puts a lot of stress on Jokic. You got Russell and you got AD right here. So Aaron Gordon steps up slightly. And LeBron simply comes from the backside. Put so much strain on the defense if you essentially have AD and Russell coming downhill at Jokic and then James is lurking on the backside. Puts really, really difficult defensive positions. Okay, so the big difference in this game was the Lakers were able to keep the lead in the fourth quarter. So they continued to get good looks. So we're going to discuss what, real quick, Denver, a simple solution they can essentially do if they want to take these away and yeah, it's going to give something up by nature, but I think the end result is going to be much better. So the first issue is I don't understand why is Jokic guarding AD on the perimeter? I don't, I, I never get that. Never, never whatsoever. And so he should never be up here. Okay. AD is a threat here. He is not a threat out here. Just have Jokic in the paint. Have him sagging off. Or I get it. You can't just camp in the paint, but like have him somewhere down here where he's nowhere near the play. And when this ball screen comes off, He's able to stay in front of AD. Okay? He's not in front of LeBron. This, I think, was a massive mistake to begin with. And thankfully, they corrected it. But that, I don't think, can happen. And the second big thing is just have Aaron Gordon stay with LeBron James. Like, do not switch Jamal Murray or Michael Porter Jr. or KCP onto him. Have, Le have Aaron Gordon fight to get back in front. Yeah, Aaron Gordon can guard other people. But I don't know if consistently Jamal Murray can guard LeBron James. Like, do not allow these kinds of situations on defense and then so on this ball screen the one where they helped off of vincent yeah i think that was the right adjustment 100 percent. put jamal murray in the paint don't matter whatsoever however on this very next one when gabe vincent's up here you should follow the exact same logic why is jamal murray get all of a sudden giving him more respect jamal murray should either do one of two things he should either be tagging ad immediately so he can be like at the nail right here hitting ad when he comes downhill to prevent ad from ever getting ahead of steam or two he can essentially cheat down and make sure LeBron doesn't have a running start here and just bump him on the way, and so that way Aaron Gordon can help over. One of those two things needs to happen because this, where Aaron Gordon and Jokic both have to worry about these players and Jamal Murray's not essentially in the play, is a recipe for disaster as well. In general, I am nowhere near pessimistic for this game, despite Denver, I think, played really, really poorly, especially on offense. I think they'll be fine. One of the other overarching questions I have is why didn't Jokic post up more like why why are the Nuggets so hesitant to go to that they went to it like four times as, as I recall and it led to good results every single time like I don't I don't understand that I feel like they should go to that earlier and I'm guessing they will but how will Denver choose to guard the ball screen and or the double ball screen whatever the technical term for that is I don't know will Denver switch and how will Denver essentially work with AD and LeBron? What are their strategies to stopping them in particular? Because uh, game four was the finally the one where the Lakers were able to score in the fourth quarter. And that was the one they were able to win. I look forward to game five. I am sure Denver will bounce back very emphatically. I have no doubt. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe. Have a blessed rest of your day.